Reimagining Success, episode 243. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Hello there and welcome back to another episode on the podcast. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, and today I'm talking to you about the numbers. And when I say the numbers, I'm not actually talking about sales, although that is a part of it. However, before we get into this, I want to do a little bit of a message because it is Independent Bookshop Week here in the UK. And so I wanted to ask you for a favour. Now, as you may know, I have two books or several books, in fact, but two books in the current uh, business, let's say, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5 and Outside the 9 to 5, the second being my latest book that came out last year. And they have self-published them on Amazon in the past. However, thanks to recent feedback from, among others, the amazing Tori. So Tori, if you're listening, thank you very much around the, of course, the value festival, which I know myself and I very much support, of supporting our local independent bookshops. Has anyone seen, um, is it You've Got Mail with uh, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks? So there is value in supporting, of course, our local businesses these days, although unfortunately Amazon is just so convenient. So it is a tricky one. But I have gone through the process of publishing my book to, in theory, be available now in libraries and in local bookshops. So I'm talking UK here, I'm afraid, but I would love for you to go in to your local library, to your local bookshop and ask them for leaving the corporate nine to five and or outside the nine to five, any book by Anna Lundberg. I can't imagine there's so many by someone called Anna Lundberg here in the UK. Um, And of course, if you have any issues, do let me know on social, on Instagram, LinkedIn, or you can email me podcast at onestepoutside.com. So if they can't find the book, let me know, um, because then I can obviously try to sort things out on my end. Uh, you, you don't need to buy it if you don't want to, but if you could ask them for it, see if they've got it in stock, um, and that would be super helpful if you could let me know as well. But I would love to support our local bookshops, especially this week, Independent Bookshop Week. So let's all make an effort to to go in. And if you don't buy my book, by the way, why don't you buy someone else's books? So if you're in there and see something else you like the look of, then let's all support our independent bookshops this week um, and every week, in fact, but uh, certainly this week as we celebrate the the lovely uh, local businesses in, um, who are who are selling books. I love a bookshop, especially if there's a, a coffee place inside. Obviously, that's quite important. But I mean, really holding the physical book in your hand, the really lovely environment in there and, and finding some unexpected treasure on the shelf is always really lovely. So please do go in and ask for my books and then above all, support them in some way or another. So thanks so much for that little side message for our independent bookshops this week. Coming back to the message this week around the numbers, not to worry about the numbers. Now, there is this view of success in business, I think, of being bigger. Bigger is better. You need the VC funding, uh, big teams, big offices, although there is a bit of a move away from that, obviously, since the last few years of the pandemic and so on. But there's this push of grow, grow, grow. And in the entrepreneurial space, even for those of us who don't do the whole funding piece, you know, the solopreneurs, service-based expert businesses, there's still this pressure, I think, to scale to six, seven, eight figures and and all these things and and to hire more freelancers supporting you and to invest in bigger tech that's going to let you automate more and have millions of people and whatever. And a lot of the business models also are, are based on selling thousands of courses and so on, right? So you need to grow and and that's always the goal. Then the second piece, so that's a piece around sort of sales and just the big image of success in society. The second piece is around followers. And it used to be on Instagram that you had to have at least 10,000 followers to get access to certain features like the link, right? And you had to have the blue tick. And by the way, you can pay now if you haven't read that in the papers. You can pay to get the blue tick. So that means less than it did in the past. Thank you, Elon, Mr. Musk. And There is this, and and I have to hold my hand up here, there is this sense of, oh my goodness, I wish I had 12,000 followers on Instagram. It would look so cool and I would be safe. I even had it on my vision board a few years ago, embarrassingly. And if you pop on my Instagram, you'll see that I do not have over 10,000 followers. I'm very much growing slowly, incrementally there. But there is this, uh, you know, pressure, whether self-imposed or otherwise, to have more views, more followers, more subscribers on Instagram, on on Facebook, less so now, but still having a massive Facebook group. And a lot of those big Facebook groups have shut down now. 
And when I first did digital marketing in, in my corporate career, the pressure, and that was, you know, 15, 16 years ago, was always on when Facebook was new, getting the page likes, which of course now we know is completely meaningless in, for a gazillion reasons these days. Um, but there is still this desire to have more followers. And then the final piece on numbers, although I'm sure you can think of others, is, you know, how many people are joining your live webinar, how many people are in your group program and so on, right? And there's this desire because, let's face it, we want to make a big impact. We want to feel successful as well. We want to make more money. Let's be honest. Um, there's this pressure and I see other people, oh my gosh, they've got thousands of people signed up to their free challenge or uh, you know, whatever it is that you're, when you're comparing yourself to other people, they've got 50 people, 100 people in their group program. And there's this kind of push towards having more people. So again, I'm sure you can think of other aspects to this, but there is this pressure, desire to grow the business, to have a bigger business, to make more money, to have more followers, to have more people in all the different programs and so on. So I want to counter this a little bit with a few different points today. And the first one is, and I, I know I've talked about this before, and I remind myself of this too, and it's so important. The first one is to value each and every human being who is listening to you. So if you're just starting out and you've got 10 people on your email list, that is amazing. That's 10 people. Imagine being a room with 10 people who are listening to everything you have to say about your business. If a couple of those buy, that's already amazing, right? If, if they're all listening, if they then tell somebody else, if they have an incredible experience and they go off and say, oh my goodness, Debbie did this workshop and it was so valuable. And even if they don't buy from you, they'll go off and recommend you to other people. I've had so many incredible ambassadors here in my community over the last few years. They've never bought anything from me as far as I'm aware, constantly recommending me, cheering me on on Instagram and being so supportive. And that means the world to me. But I really think we can't underestimate the importance of valuing each and every human. But first of all, just out of the inherent value and, you know, generosity, I suppose, of this person to show up the trust they're showing in you to listen to what you have to say. So even if nothing else happens, just valuing that is, is important and enough. But then even if we're going to be a little bit more capitalist and think about the consequences, as I said, you want to over deliver for anyone who is listening now so that you can, you know, so that they will go on and recommend you and then they'll bring more people and so on, right? If you do a really rubbish job of the current people in your program, you've only got one person who signed up, only one person, that's one person who's got out their credit card and paid you and believes in you. So do your best, most amazing job with this person and you'll have two or three next time. You'll have five, you'll have seven before you know it in a few years time and it might take longer than you want. You'll have more people and you'll have possibly a fan for life if you over deliver for these couple of people, right? So even if you've promised a group program and only a couple have shown up, then then of course it needs to make sense for you financially and so on, but over deliver for those people and that can only be a good thing. So that's the first piece is to really value each and every human person, just first of all, out of their inherent trust and, and um, yeah, the fact that they're showing up for you. That's huge. Let's celebrate that and be grateful. And then secondly, also for the potential implications of, of really doing an incredible job with those people who are showing up, however few. Then the second piece is that I personally, oh, a little sparrow has just landed on my on the brick outside my window. <laughs> I personally love working with an intimate group, whether it's a free workshop, um, a paid workshop, in a program, as much as it's really hard. And I like to think that I've perfected the art of talking to myself now on a live. So, you know, if you ever do catch one of my lives, you probably wouldn't know. Um, there might be less interaction, but, it, but you know, I'm very happy as you can maybe hear too, just to babble on. Um, so, you know, that's an art in itself. But I love when a couple of people show up and they can ask their specific questions and I can really tailor it to you. We talked about this before about the value of that personal feedback and so on. In a paid program, especially, and this is some work I've been doing, it's easy to think, oh, I so want to have 50 people in my program, 100 people, but a couple of things. One is maybe you don't even have the tech set up and the capacity to onboard all those people to deliver an amazing job and so on, right? But secondly, again, I actually love making a bigger impact on a handful of people. This is part of choosing your business model in the first place. If you want to reach thousands of people and you don't mind not really having a huge impact, you just want to, you know, give an inspirational talk that you get paid for and everyone leaves with a bit of a nugget or sell lots and lots of courses at a really affordable price and they get some basics. But, you know, you can't deliver 
you can't, you just can't financially and energetically <laughs> provide the support that they actually need with that kind of model. If that's what you want to do, that's that's completely fine. And that's the whole point of choose your own business model. However, actually, in my case, and I heard this on a challenge I did recently as well, having that intimacy, that's how I thrive. As much as I'd love to be on stage and speak in front of lots of people, and I absolutely will do that again in the future. In the meantime, I want to you know, in the incubator program that I've been talking about the last few weeks and so on, and, and in the business breakthrough challenge, I want to be there for you. And I can only do that if I have a small group. Now, that's not to say that, you know, if, <laughs> and and hopefully this will happen, or hopefully, I say hopefully, yes, I suppose hopefully at some point, if and when I want to, let's put it that way, be intentional about it, grow and scale the numbers. When I have, you know, maybe when both kids are at school, when I have more than three days uh, during the week, although now I've been told by everybody that school time actually gives you less time, but let's just <laughs> forget about that for a moment. If when the kids have graduated from school in, in 14 years time, 16 years time, I have more time, then maybe if I want more people, then that's fine. I know that I'll be able to evolve my business. In fact, I could cope with that now because I've got the back end systems and so on. I'm just choosing for now, especially as I ramp up the program to have smaller groups. If I had more people, to be honest, I'd probably do multiple calls. And also, just so you know, while we're on this, you know, usually I've heard the number 20, 30% of people who are signed up to program will join the call. So you could have 100 people in the program and still only 20 turn up in your call. So it's not to say that you can't have lots of people in your program. But again, I would much rather have a smaller group where I can really make a big impact. So that's my own personal preference. And then finally, putting our capitalist hat on again, we want to pay the bills, we want to have financial abundance, whatever it is, with the right business model and pricing, you absolutely can have a financially thriving business without having huge groups, right? If you sit down and do a bit of maths, you'll be able to see that actually you only need to be paying, you know, five people, um, one-to-one clients, 10 people in a group program paying, you know, whatever it is, 500 pounds, 5,000 pounds, do the maths over the year. You do not need thousands of people in order to hit even your six-figure target and so on, right? So that's just something to think about. So again, first of all, <laughs> Challenge some of this mindset piece around bigger is better. Then value each and every human who is showing up, over deliver, create a a fan for life, an ambassador for you and what you're delivering. So they go on and and recommend you and and, uh, rave about you to other people. Secondly, see the value if you're like me and you like working with that intimate group. I know some of you really love the personal connection. A lot of us do. And and above all, the impact we can make is so much deeper. We can really provide a bigger transformation if we're working with that intimate group and we're able to provide personalized feedback, tailored support and troubleshooting and so on. And then finally, make sure that you do have the right business model in place. If you're charging £10 a um, a logo for your graphic design or, you know, £50 for a one-to-one call or whatever, you're just not going to hit those targets, right? So you need that business model and pricing in place. So question your mindset and do the maths and stop worrying about the numbers. Once you've done that, once you've done the maths, then you've got those targets in place. You know you've got the business model in place. And then focus on really showing up, really serving those people who are there for you And growth can come later if and when you want it to. But for now, know that it's not necessary. And again, you only need to look at my numbers to see that, you know, with 2,000 odd people on Instagram, yes, I have about 10,000 on LinkedIn. That's a little bit different. With uh, corporate, by the way, we haven't even talked about that. If your business model is B2B in corporate, you don't need any followers. Of course, LinkedIn connections and so on. You certainly don't need people following your YouTube or Instagram to do really lucrative contracts with big companies. So there you go. We can end on that note. Your business model could be completely unreliant on having any followers. Uh, You can have two or three clients. I wouldn't recommend having just one because that becomes then a job and then you're dependent on that one client. But you can have a handful of B2B clients and have a really thriving business. So just leave you with that uh, final mindset shift as well. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, Let me know as ever your feedback and best of luck with growing the business that feels right for you, right? That's what we're always talking about. The size, the nature, the type of transformation you want to support your clients with and how you want to show up in your marketing and so on. You know, if you want those big numbers and so on, by all means, and you can, you know, invest in ads to get those numbers, there are strategies to 
get the sort of lower quality, lower caliber, I suppose, lead, but to get the numbers. And by the way, we'll be talking next week about the opposite, how to attract the right caliber of clients, the high quality leads and clients as well. And um, But if that's what you want to do, the big numbers, that's there's by no means anything wrong with that. It just it happens to be that my business model and certainly it is possible to have a business model that doesn't require that. That's the key takeaway from today. So I hope that's reassuring to you. And I hope you can really now go back to your desk, go back to your clients and people who are there in front of you right now and really serve them as your big focus and, and not worry so much about the future of, of who and how many people will show up later on. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. There is so much incredible information out there that's going to help you build and grow your business. However, what is missing from all this is the personalized feedback, support with troubleshooting and tailored guidance that's really designed to help you in your particular situation with your specific challenges. Introducing the Business Incubator, a mentoring program focused on exactly that implementation, support and accountability to help experienced corporate professionals like you grow your expert business faster without sacrificing your personal life to do so. You'll get expert guidance and personal feedback to help you focus on the right things at the right time comprehensive training materials and frameworks to support you. But above all, you will get weekly structure and accountability to help you identify your priorities, stay focused and review your progress. And you'll get a supportive community of people who get it, who are going to cheer you on and share their lessons learned. So this is a really unique hybrid program that gives you the intimacy of one-to-one -one support, the training frameworks and structure of a course, and that community element of a group program. You can read more and apply now at onestepoutside.com forward slash grow. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash grow.